What's up, collectors? Welcome back to Films by Color and to another top 10 video. I did my top 10 digibooks a few weeks ago and I got a really great response to that. Lots of conversation in the comments. People seem to really enjoy that video. So I'm going to do a follow up video to that one today. And this time around, we're talking digi packs. Just like in my digibooks video, I'm going to do a quick rundown of what a digi pack is in case you're a new collector and you're not sure what I'm talking about. A digi pack is a completely cardboard release. So instead of a standard plastic Blu-ray or 4K jewel case, you're going to get a completely cardboard packaging. And instead of popping open like this, it's going to usually fold up uh, into some kind of slip cover or slip case. You can have lots of different kinds of digi packs. Uh, for example, this Hunger Games digi pack has a slip cover that slides off the top and the digi pack is underneath and it folds out like that. You can also have a slip case around the digipack. So instead of coming off the top, it slides out of the side like this wonderful Marcel the Shell with Shoes on release from A24, uh, which is a really great release. I love those A24 releases. And the digipack itself can be a lot of different ways. So this Lost in Paris digipack from Oscilloscope Laboratories is just a bifold. It only opens once and that's all you get. Just your disc in there and it only folds once. Or you can have a trifold like this Around the World in 80 Days digipack that I have from Warner Brothers. This one folds three times here. Really great release, love that one. Still hoping for a Blu-ray release of that soon. Or you can have an insane box set for usually like a television show or something. This is the Fantastic Four Complete series and this one folds five times. It opens once and then it opens again and then it opens again. So this is a massive digipack. You can have all kinds of digipacks. You can even get into some box sets. We're gonna touch on all the different kinds of digipacks today in this video as we count down my top 10 digipacks in my own personal collection. One last caveat before we get into the list, I had to completely exclude Criterion from this list. Criterion puts out so many great Digipack releases and if I included them on this list, eight or nine of them would have probably been from Criterion. So they would have completely taken over the list. So I'm just gonna completely leave them off for today so we can talk about some other studios releases, leaving the door open to eventually maybe do a complete Criterion list somewhere in the future. But let's just get into my complete non-Criterion top 10 list of Digipacks in my personal collection. Let's do it. All right, starting with number 10, I'm gonna to go to a pretty big major studio that used to do a really great job with Digipack releases, just like Warner Brothers used to do a great job with their Digi book releases for all their DC films and other films in their catalog. Disney used to do a really great job with their Digipack releases for all the Marvel films for a little bit, for some Pixar films. They've stopped doing it since then and now they do much lesser releases. It's basically just a glorified slipcover, but these were great back in the day. So I wanted to shed a little light on the good work that they were doing back then. Uh, so we got the uh, last few Marvel movies before phase four started. So Captain Marvel, we got a really nice release from them. Thor Ragnarok, they also did the same thing. And then we got both parts of the Avengers in these really nice, thick, deluxe digipacks. I'll open one of these up so you can see what they're like. They have a full trifold there with characters on it. So you've got Cap, Thor, and Iron Man. They have a full booklet in here, which is great. Almost feels a little bit like a boutique release. You've got all kinds of concept art and storyboards and interesting behind the scenes stuff in there. And then you've got all the discs, two Blu-ray discs and a 4K disc. So they did that for Marvel. They also did a couple Pixar releases. I've got Toy Story 4 here as well, which is a super thick release. But the one I'm going with for my number 10 is the Coco release. This is a beautiful release. Uh, love this movie, first of all. One of the Definitely a top 10 Pixar movie, but uh, here we go. We've got this lovely purple, brightly colored release with the purples and oranges, uh, you know, obviously reflecting the, uh, the cinematography in the movie. There it opens up to the bridge. Looks amazing. Look at all those colors. Look at all of the uh, design put into this. It's got three discs. There's what the back looks like as well. And yes, it does come with a booklet. And this is really cool. This is a, it's kind of a double booklet. So the front here is a storybook uh, or the back, whichever way you wanna look at it. And then the other side is the behind the scenes stuff. So we still get plenty of concept art and uh, character origins and all kinds of behind the scenes stuff. There's a comparison 
between the storyboard and the final image in the film. So all this stuff all the way through, but because it is a kid's film, you do get a really cool little storybook version of the film on the other side. So you've got a really nice booklet and just the presentation on the packaging itself. I've removed the discs there. You can see that even the artwork goes behind the discs there. Just a beautiful release. I wanted to get one of these Disney releases on here. And I think after pulling them all out from the shelf, I think this one inched out as my favorite, but they're all great. And this spot on the list is kind of just reserved for uh, the great work that Disney used to do with all of their Digipack releases. Not so much anymore, which is a shame, but these used to be really great. So that is my number 10 spot. Let's go ahead and look at my number nine. For my number nine, we're going away from Disney and to a very unusual release from 20th Century Fox to the land of Chronicles of Narnia. The first two Narnia films were put out by Disney and they just came in these standard slipcover releases. But for some reason, with the third movie, Voyage of the Dawn Treader, 20th Century Fox just decided to go all out with this absolutely crazy release. Look at this. This is a Blu-ray release, but it is the size of a DVD case quite a bit bigger than a standard Blu-ray release. Uh, it's got this beautiful slip cover right here on the front with all kinds of holofoil and embossed printing all around it. Uh, there's the back, lovely shiny purple spine on there. And then you take that slip cover off. Not only do you get a slip cover with some original artwork here underneath going all the way around the back, but this is also a slip case. So you've got a slip case in here as well. You've got both kinds of covers on there. This one comes out from the side. And then in here, you have the actual Digipack, which is not just a standard Digipack. It is a crazy, weird trifold Digipack that I'll open up here for you. You've got the Dawn Treader right there on the front. It says return to magic, return to hope. And then it opens up like a standard Digipack does. Oop, there goes my ticket from when I saw it in theaters all the way back December 22nd of 2010. Uh, so there's the Digipack. There's the boat there on the back and it says return to Narnia right there. But then on the inside, I just lost the disc and it landed right on the stop recording button on my computer. So I had to redo that, but there we go. This actually opens down and there you have the wheel, the steering wheel of the ship. Look at that. Look at that. You've got a dragon over there. Incredible release. This is absolutely nuts. The disc is safely. A lot of people don't like digipacks because they don't think the discs are safe because they just kind of slide into cardboard. This Blu-ray disc is actually popped into a plastic little gummy case right there. So it's completely safe and uh, it just folds down like that. And then this folds in like this. Wonderful packaging for this. I don't know why they decided to go all out for this one, but on the inside behind the wheel, you've also got a little booklet in here. Now, this is the one thing that's keeping it from uh, being higher on the list. I think this is a perfect release. We're not talking really about the movies in this list. We're just talking about the packaging, but uh, this is not as cool as it could have been. It could have been really cool if they put like a behind the scenes booklet in here. I would have really liked that, but this is just collectible postcards, which I don't really know what to do with. I don't know what this, what kind of fan this is for. Maybe some people do cool things with this. I don't know what the postcards thing is for, but uh, it's very nice. It uh, It's cool that they went the extra mile and put something in here. I just wish that was a normal booklet, but the release itself is crazy. Uh, don't really have any complaints about it. Everything sits in there nicely besides that one disc that did fall out, but that was just the digital copy disc, which doesn't do anything anymore anyway, but I'll slide that back in and get this folded up and we can take a look at the outside one more time. So getting that slid right back into the slip case and then the slip cover goes on top of all of that. Very nice release. This is a Blu-ray DVD and digital copy. Back in the day, 2010, one of the first digipacks I ever got, actually the first digipack I ever got was the Social Network digipack, which I have right over here. This was the first one that I ever saw. Some of you might remember this one. This is a really nice release as well. Uh, but that in 2010, and then also this one a little bit later were the first releases that ever got me into kind of collectible packaging. And uh, I never look back. I really like this kind of uh, treatment that they put under these packaging. So that's why I wanna do videos like this to uh, share some cool things in my collection that you might not be familiar with. So that's my number nine, Chronicles of Narnia, The Voyage of the Dawn Treader. Maybe check that one out on eBay if you like it. I'm sure you can get it pretty cheap these days because it is an older release at this point. Just make sure you find one that's still in pretty good shape. For my number eight, I've got an insane release here, a box set that most people would probably have in their top three. This isn't mine though. This actually belongs to my wife. This is Grace's. She had this before I even met her. This is an insane, huge box set. 
for all of the Harry Potter films. You can see right there, it says limited edition, limited to 25,000. It's got this wonderful, uh, classy looking box set that goes around the entire thing. I'm not the biggest Harry Potter fan. I actually have only seen the films once and it was well into my adult life. I was not allowed to watch or read Harry Potter as a kid. It wasn't until I met my wife and we started dating that she showed me all the Harry Potter movies. So I don't have any nostalgic connection to these but my wife is a huge Harry Potter fan, so I wanted to get this on here for her and because it's just an awesome release. So I will show you what it looks like now. It comes in this insane box set that is super sturdy, opens up with this outer cover here. Look at that. Look at that. Looks amazing. You've got all the movies in there in two separate digipacks in there, and you've got a really cool book as well. First, we've got years one through five. It's divided up by years. Really like how they did this. There's Hogwarts there on the front, and then the digipack opens up. And right off the bat, you've got year one and year two right there. The Sorcerer's Stone and Chamber of Secrets. Actually, this says Philosopher's Stone because this is a UK release. Then you've got year three and four over there. And then it opens up finally to year five right there. And the discs are all in there. Look at that. Look at that. Insane. Two discs for each year, 10 discs in just this one side of the box set. The other digipack is just years six and seven, but it is just as thick as the first one. You've got right there year six and year seven, and then those open up the exact same way. It looks like 10 discs again, although it looks like she's missing a couple discs in here. She's had this for quite some time, but this is a UK release. You can see the ratings there on the discs. Uh, it looks like there's actually nine discs in this one, but holy crap, lots of bonus features and supplements on this release. Uh, anything you could want as a Harry Potter fan. This is a Blu-ray release. I know they've since put out 4K box sets, but this one looks so nice. And it also has this really cool book that looks very similar to the one we just looked at for Narnia, although this is a hardcover book. And I don't think this is just postcards. I think this is all kinds of goodies in here. Uh, you've got photos uh, of all of the cast. There is Hagrid there. It looks like this actually might be just the equivalent of postcards. It's just photos all the way through. There's no essays or anything, uh, but it is kind of cool to have all of these uh, photos that you have never seen before. Uh, but that's kind of cool. I love uh, the hardcover book. Looks really nice. I uh, love how it looks kind of like a real book. And then you've got the two big digi packs right there. A beautiful release, a beautiful digi pack box set. Maybe kind of cheating uh, to compare this to regular digi packs, but I had to get it on the list because it is a super cool release. And uh, maybe try to find one of those if you can. I have no idea what those are going for these days. Uh, like I said, we have lots of newer Harry Potter releases that you can probably get your hands on a little bit easier, especially because this is a UK release, but it's been sitting on our shelf since I got together with Grace, so wanted to throw that one in there. That's my number eight. For my number seven, we're going to the first boutique label that we've talked about so far. This is from Severin Films. This is the release of Santa Sangre. This is an incredible four disc release from Severin. Wonderful artwork there on the front, very thick, hefty, a box set looking digipack here. There's all the rundown of all the special features included on the discs. You've got the 4K and Blu-ray discs one and two. Then you've got another Blu-ray disc with tons and tons of supplements. And then you've got a fourth disc in there for the original soundtrack, which is included as well. Love this release and a really, really great movie as well. If you haven't seen uh, Jodorowsky's Santa Sangre, I highly recommend it. I'm gonna go ahead and slide this out now. We've got a digipack in here. Very thick digipack. Uh, right there, you've got Jodorowsky's Santa Sangre. We've got kind of the equivalent of character cards here on the digipack itself. So there is the mother character, right? Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. We're losing everything. We've got a ton of uh, art cards in here. I'll get to those in a minute, but we'll go ahead and look at the digipack itself. You've kind of got title cards for each of the different characters here. And then there is Phoenix there at the end right there. And then the inside, they all have similar looking artwork for the discs, again, with all four of the different characters right there. So here is the 4K Ultra HD disc. Movie looks incredible on there. There is the Blu-ray feature 
There is the Blu-ray for all of the supplements and bonus features. And then over here is the soundtrack, the entire soundtrack included on disc. Love it when movies do that. I wish we would get that more often. That's a really nice feature that I wish more boutique labels would take advantage of. And then you've got some art cards in here. Again, I wish this was a booklet instead of the art cards, but these are, you know, pretty nice. If you're an art card fan, there's the circus. Uh, there's the elephant scene. There's the funeral scene. There's the knife throwing scene. Uh, there's some of the graveyard scene and there's a, another card right there. I don't want to give away too much because there's things that can be spoiled in this release, but you got tons of art cards. Love this release. Love the uh, work they put into this movie. I think it deserves a very special release and I really like what Severin did with it. This was my first Severin release and I'm very happy with it and I might check out some more releases from them so far. That is my number seven, Severin's Santa Sangre. For my number six, we're going to another boutique label. This is Oscilloscope Laboratories, which I mentioned earlier in the video. Uh, and this is the first release I ever got from Oscilloscope Labs. It is a little comedy film, independent comedy film called It's a Disaster, one of my very favorite comedies. Love this movie, I've gone back to it several times. Uh, and this is a wonderful Digipack release. So you can't really tell, but they do a very different texture. They're not gloss, they're very matte and textured with their slip cases that they do. Really like the finish that they put on these releases. They all have the same spine with the spine number at the top. This is spine number 51, it's a disaster. If you don't know what this movie is, it is about a dinner party a very awkward dinner party with some old friends and one of their new boyfriends who's coming to stay. And while they're having dinner, uh, the apocalypse happens around them and they're trapped in the house. So this whole release is designed to look like a survival manual, which is so cool. I just love all of the extra care they put into this to make it seem like a real like pamphlet that you would get for the end of the world. Uh, disaster survival manual. It opens up just like this. It says from the Department of Disaster Field Manual right there. And it opens up, there's all the characters and actors from the film. Are you prepared? Cheat sheet. And it's got all these cool little things. Know your home, have emergency supplies. So very funny, uh, very funny read through. This doesn't come with a booklet, but this kind of works as a little fun booklet. It's got all this stuff in here. I'll try to go slow so you can read through all of this if you're interested. It has a little insert disc right there. So it's acting like there's a disc that goes along with this uh, pamphlet. Very, very cool. I love, again, I, I love the extra mile. When companies go the extra mile and put special care and put all kinds of references to the film. It shows that they really care about the film and uh, they, that whoever designed it uh, had a lot of love for the film and put a lot of care into it. So I really, really appreciate that. And because of that, it made it all the way to number six on my list. That's It's a Disaster. Highly recommend that one. If you like awkward comedy in any way, check out this movie. It's one of my favorites. For my number five, I've got a series of digipacks here. These are the original Fleischer Studios Popeye the Sailor cartoons from 1933 all the way to 1940. We've got three different releases for these. They separated them out into these really, really nice releases. Very colorful. Love the bright colors. We'll go through each one here. Volume one is Popeye the Sailor 1933 to 1938. This one has 60 theatrical shorts on four discs. I don't think the camera's doing this justice because you can't really see all of the details. Maybe you can if I, if I turn it like that. Not only is the artwork amazing and looks really good, I love the monochromatic color scheme that they picked with just the black and white and the yellow, obviously, but you can't see each one of these letters is fully embossed. All of Popeye is embossed. The cartoon here, this little seal at the bottom is embossed. Uh, you've got hyper gloss on the black and the white with a nice matte on the yellow. There's the spine. This is a thicker one than the other two. It says volume one right there. Another beautiful artwork there on the back. And then some screenshots from the shorts included. Slides out from the side. Slipcase looks great. Digipack underneath looks just as good. There's Popeye right there. Chomping down on some spinach with another beautifully embossed photo. And then the same thing here with Bluto and olive oil on the back. I'm a huge fan of these shorts. Love watching these through with my kids. This is the first one. So this goes all the way back to his first appearance, which is very problematic today. So maybe uh, watch that one with a grain of salt. I learned a lot about 
things that happened in our past in that cartoon that I didn't even know about. But there you go, you've got, I love when they do this, they show all of the cartoons listed there, all the theatrical shorts with their names in order, and then it goes into the inside as well with disc one, disc two, and then disc three and disc four. Beautiful release for volume one, and then we've got the same treatment for volume two right here, which is like a pink color. Unfortunately, these ones are smaller, so they only have two discs with 31 theatrical shorts on here. They still have the exact same embossed, glossy treatment on the front, but then on the inside, these still have the great artwork, but they only open once, so it's just a bifold. There's all the uh, shorts listed there on the back, and then you've got the two discs in there. Just uh, above and beyond, they went with this set. I love how they look. Love all the artwork that they did for these. Uh, they look really nice. And here is volume three as well. I would love Blu-ray sets for these someday, but I don't know if we're ever gonna get that. Uh, these look really good. These probably look the best they're gonna look on DVD. I would love these cleaned up even better someday, but these are great. I'm glad I finally pulled the trigger and found all of these. Uh, they also have standard jewel cases you can pick up if you don't like digipacks, but I love digipacks and I think these are incredible. This one even comes with a little uh, Popeye comic book which if you didn't know, uh, Popeye was originally a comic strip, then it became uh, the shorts later on, and then it's had TV shows and mo uh, the movie and everything, so there's all kinds of stuff for Popeye, but I love these original Digipack releases that they did for these Fleischer shorts. You can also get the Famous Studio shorts, which are actually on Blu-ray, um, but uh, they did not get these nice releases like the Fleischer ones did. Highly recommend those, and just the shorts in general. If you haven't watched those, uh, they still hold up great, incredible leaps in animation that Fleischer was doing at the time. Awesome, awesome shorts. Show them to your kids, or just, if you don't have kids, watch them yourself, because they're great. So that is my number five, lumping all of the Popeye Diddy Packs into one right there. Let's get into the second half of the list. For my number four, I'm going with another box set. This one's a little different though. This is another kind of box set you can have with Digipacks. Criterion does this quite a bit. But this is a Japanese release of a superhero film from 2012. It is The Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, huge box set for just one movie. This was the first time, I remember this was the first time I ever spent $50 on one movie back in the day. This was a huge deal. Bought this on eBay all the way from Japan. Uh, and I thought it was so much money for a movie. And now I've, now I've spent way more on movies and most boutique releases are around 50 bucks these days. So this is nothing these days, but this is a big deal for college DJ back in the day. Uh, you've got five digipacks in here. So each disc has its own digipack its own little bifold. You've got a translucent slipcover like I showed at the beginning. This is another example of that. So Spider-Man right there with his mask on and then you slide it out and there's Andrew Garfield right there on the first digipack, disc one. The digipacks also make up the spider logo on the side, which is very cool. And then you've got the webbing on the back. So just a lot of intricate detail on this box set. I love what they did with this. The logo slides right into the web right there. I'll show you each digipack individually. They're very slim bifolds, just one disc each. The first one here, you've already seen Andrew Garfield there on the front, just some advertisements in there, but there's disc one. That's the Blu-ray 3D disc, back when we were still doing that. Then you've got another different poster for the film right there on disc two. And then you've got the Blu-ray feature film, the 2D version. Then you've got another poster, so many posters for this movie. And then there's the Blu-ray special features with Lizard right there on disc three. And you've got this poster on the front of disc four, which was a bonus disc that has even more special bonus features on there. And then disc five is another bonus disc with more special features on there. So just an insane amount of care put into one superhero movie uh, coming out of Japan. They did a really good job on this release and it's got, this box set itself has like a lot of nostalgia for me. Like I said, it was my first big uh, investment as a collector for special kind of box set like this that was 50 bucks at the time which was quite a lot for me. So gotta put that one on the list. It's a really nice way to use Digipacks. I love when they do creative stuff like this, like they do with the Narnia set, where it kind of comes together and has some kind of relevance for the movie itself. But that is the amazing Spider-Man limited edition box set from Japan. Don't know how limited that was. I wasn't keeping track of stuff back then when I started collecting. I was a very young collector at the time. 
but I just love how it looks on the shelf and it's always sitting right back there in the black section. So that is my number four. For my number three, we got another Spider-Man film. It's weird how these lined up, but we are going to the MCU this time. I've got my Spider-Man Homecoming shirt on to represent. And here it is, Spider-Man Homecoming, the Target exclusive Digipack from that year. This uh, is put out by Sony because of the way their deal works. Sony had the distribution rights, so it did not get a Disney Digipack release from Target. These were also Target exclusives, but this one got its own unique release from Sony. Sony never has any consistency. They put out different releases every single time they drop a movie, uh, and they've put out these movies many, many times since then, but this was the Target exclusive at the time, and it is awesome. It's so cool. It is not like kind of flimsy. Car Most of these are just kind of flimsy, thin cardboard. I don't know what this is made of, but this is much harder, much more solid than uh, any other digipack we've talked about today. It's basically like a box set that you would get from like Vinegar Syndrome or something. It looks incredible. And not only is it nice and sturdy and solid, I've had this since 2016, 27, this came out in 2017. I've had it since then and uh, it's, it doesn't have a dent on it. It's very, very solid. But on top of that, the design itself is awesome. I love this kind of design, this kind of collage uh, handmade looking design. It's made to look like Peter's notebook. It's got all these uh, sketches and doodles and kind of sticky notes and crumpled up papers and all kinds of cool stuff. And even the, the cover itself is kind of looks like it's made of stickers and it's got little doodles all over it. I really like this kind of design. Looks like stuff's just kind of taped on there and then it opens up. You get the notebook there and it opens up to three separate discs. You've got a Blu-ray disc and you've got a DVD disc and then you've also got a bonus disc which looks really cool. I'll show you what it looks like underneath all of the discs. You've got another little collaged style design under there with uh, photos and stickers and tape and everything. It looks so cool. I love the care they put into this. It's a high school movie. It's the most high school Spider-Man movie we've ever got. So I really like all the care they put into that. There are my ticket stubs right there. And it also comes with this, which is kind of the downside of the set. I keep repeating myself on this list. I wish it came with a booklet like those Disney Target exclusives come with. This is not a booklet. This is just kind of a little flimsy comic book, like a prequel comic. I don't know if anyone really cares about these or if anyone loves these when they do these. It's not for me. I would much rather have a thicker booklet with like stuff about the film, but it does have a nice little pouch that it slides into right there, which is nice. Uh, they did put some care into it. I just wish they would have done a full on booklet, but that is the Homecoming, Spider-Man Homecoming release from 2017 from Sony and the Target exclusive. Love that release a lot. Uh, bright yellow back there on the shelf. Also love when they do unique colors for these because it makes my shelf look a little bit more interesting. So that is all the way up at number three. Can't believe it made it that high, but uh, this is kind of arbitrary anyway, at least the listing of them, the ranking of them. But uh, I really do like that release, so I had to talk about it. And there we go. For my number two, I've got a really unorthodox pick, but I had to get this on here. Love this, probably my favorite TV show of all time. And they put out some really, really great releases for these. So I'm just gonna lump them all together here at number two. This is The Office, the American series. They did a digipack for almost every single season. We didn't get it for the first season. The first season, just a very short six episode season. So we just got a standard DVD. But starting right with season two, we got these wonderful digipack releases. Uh, season two, three, and four are DVD releases, then they switched over to HD and gave us Blu-ray releases for the rest of the seasons. But even the DVDs, like we've since then got Blu-ray releases of these and I can't even bring myself to get rid of these because the, the digipacks are so cool. It's got that same kind of design as the Homecoming release we just looked at where it kind of looks like a, a bulletin board or an office desk with just papers scattered everywhere. They put the bonus features there on a sticky note and I highly recommend these for the bonus features because there are tons of deleted scenes on these. Uh, there's all the bonus features right there. And then they fold out and you've got all the episodes listed there uh, with a little description of each and you've got all the discs with the crumpled paper background. This is season two. We've got the same treatment for season three as well, another digipack. Same kind of design, looks great. And then season four, they really stepped it up. This one's insane. Look at this thick, slip cover here that goes over the top and you've got the standard digipack as well with all of the bonus features. Same style design, but doing different things here with photos and backgrounds and everything. They look like stacks of Dunder Mifflin paper with all the discs there. But this one, 
I've never seen this before and I really wish other like boutique labels would do this more often. They included a script, an episode script in here. So this is the script for Dinner Party for season four, which is an episode I've seen a million times, but it's very cool to look through here and see how the script differs, what was actually in the script, what was improv on the day. The actual opener here, the stinger before the opening credits is uh, different in here. They had one planned uh, and they eventually just used the beginning of the episode as the stinger. So this one was used in a different episode. So little stuff like that for super fans uh, is super nice. And I wish they would do that more often. I don't know why we don't get like, it would be so cool if we got like movie scripts uh, with our boutique releases. Uh, I don't know why they don't do that, but I would love it. We've also got seasons five and six here. They did the same thing. Still doing the digipacks. These are Blu-rays this time around. And then we also have seven, eight, and nine, but really no reason to own those. Seven, there's some good stuff with Michael in there, but season eight and nine are completely worthless in my opinion. I don't think there's anything redeemable about those seasons. So I should probably sell those off and not uh, keep those taking up space on my shelf. But overall, the Office Digipacks are incredible and it is one of my favorite shows of all time. So it made it all the way to number two just for sheer number of Digipacks. We've got all, every single season almost has a lovely Digipack. So huge fan of those. Uh, can't say enough good things about those. Highly recommend those. You can probably find those on eBay for super cheap. If you're an Office super fan, maybe check those out. And uh, yeah, that's my number two. Kind of a weird pick, but I had to get it on there and that's where it landed. And finally, my number one, I don't know how it could be anything else but this release. This is another crazy box set, boutique label, uh, Corzon out of the UK. This is the only release from them I have, but it is absolutely beautiful. It is the Three Colors trilogy that just came out last year, I believe, or maybe the year before, but it is a beautiful release. Got this little tiny slip cover here. Seven disc set, 4K Ultra HD and Blu-ray. You got all three films and a bonus disc and a 32 page book, uh, five art cards, all kinds of goodies inside that we're gonna look at here in a second. Look at this beautiful blue box set stands out right there on the shelf. It's got this lovely like cloth bound book texture that goes all the way around. Very classy looking release. Love, how, love what they did with this thing. They have several of these box sets now and I would like to get some of the other ones too, but this is the only one I have so far. But inside you'll see there is What's that look like? Is that a digipack? No, that's not a digipack. That is a slip case. So we've got this slip case uh, for the box set and then inside is another slip case which a with a nice little simplistic minimalist design for all three colors there. Very solid white. Again, very classy looking case. So we'll pull this slip case off and then inside that is the digipack, a massive digipack, super thick, very, like I said, minimal design on this one. I'm gonna try to make all the art cards in the booklet not fall out. Let me slide those out. Opens up horizontally like this. So we've got, oh my gosh, I can't even get this all on camera. So it opens up this way. You've got red, blue, and white, and then it keeps going over this way. I'm trying not to damage it. There it is, all the way across. One, two, I don't even have it open up all the way. One more, okay. There it is, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven discs. Huge digipack. I kind of wish they had split this up into two now that I'm opening it up and trying to show it on camera, but look at that. Look at that, all seven discs. This isn't really made to sh be shown all at once on camera. You kind of just want to lay it down on a desk and open it up that way, but you've got three colors blue there, three colors red, and three colors white. Those are the 4K discs. And you've got the same thing for the Blu-ray discs. And then you've got the bonus disc all the way at the end. And then it comes with this booklet here. Uh, very nice booklet. This is what I want with all those other releases. Every single one we looked at today uh, did not have this, but this is great. This is your standard boutique booklet with uh, essays about the film that you can read through. I think each one has an essay in here and some photos from the film as well. Very nice release. And then you've also got these art cards in here which are secured with this little strap. The, it looks like they commissioned several different artists to do their own interpretation on the three films. So there is red, white, and blue. There's another artist's interpretation. Uh, all these are, yeah, all three of the films. None of these are about individual films. These are posters for the whole trilogy. There's another one. And then there is a 
painting of a very iconic shot from the first one, uh, blue right there. I'm not a huge fan of art cards, but those ones are pretty nice, uh, pretty unique. So I'm okay with including those ones, especially because we did get a booklet, not just art cards. We got everything in here. And I will say, for those of you who don't like digipacks because they don't house the discs safely, these ones all have plastic. Uh, there's a plastic case on each section of the digipack. So you've got each one safely in there. None of them are going to fall out when you open it up. This is an insane release. I love everything about this. And that is why I went with this version instead of the Criterion version. I uh, love what they did with this. It is a little pricier. Uh, I think I found it for a pretty good deal. Actually, I think I got it for a Christmas present from Grace. I believe that's where I got it from this last Christmas. But man, look at that. Look at that. I had to get that one. Uh, the Criterion set is nice, but look at that. It's, it's so good. Happy to have that back there on the shelf. If you want these films, I think this is the best way to get it. I also think the supplements on here are a little better. I think it includes a lot of short films by the same director, which is very cool. Uh, I'd like to dive into more of his stuff, so that's another reason why I picked this one up. The Three Colors Trilogy from Curzon, all the way over in the UK. If it's still in print, go ahead and grab yourself a copy. You will not be disappointed. That is my number one, easily my number one. That was the first one when I was putting together this list, threw that one right at the top, and then had to start arranging the rest of them on the list. But very, very happy with that one. And that is my list. That's my top 10 digipacks in my personal collection. We kind of went all kinds of stuff on the list. We went all over the place. We had Pixar films, Harry Potter films, superhero films, little independent films, boutique releases, major studio releases, all kinds of stuff. I'm glad we really covered the gamut there on the list. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope uh, that was helpful to show some of that stuff to you. Hopefully that gave you some ideas or inspiration for your personal collection. Be sure to leave a comment down below if you know of any other really cool Digipack releases that I didn't mention. Uh, I'm always happy to learn about new releases. And let me know in the comments if you would like me to do a Criterion version where I count down my top 10 Criterion Digipacks because there's a lot of great stuff there as well. In case you missed it, I'll go ahead and throw up the link to my top 10 Digibooks video right there. Go ahead and click on that link if you haven't seen that video yet. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, keep collecting and I'll be back with another video real soon.